bit of a different video today. I wanted to go over the first PCB board that I've ever made and to look back at it to see how atrocious it was and how different like my abilities are today and you know for for those of you just starting out and to pick up these key different things so it was based around this LM2576T a Texas Instrument Voltage Regulator at the previous company I was at it was a step down voltage regulator and you know they wanted something made it was a SMT version of this component and it was I think it takes up to a maximum of 45 so here is the issue already I believe the specification was to have up to 50 volts and more and I've chosen 45 so that was a big no to start off with the output current didn't need to be 3 amps either I believe I was only going to output like 50 milliamps or 100 milliamps maybe so that wasn't needed at all the input voltage minimum was 5 volt um, it was going up to 50 anyway but it was basically a solar cell thing it, it, it was just a test and trial but we'll have a look so yeah, I used the typical application circuit which was good at the time like I knew about typical application circuits and uh, I followed it well I would hope I did let's go down here let's see if I can find the efficiency uh, here we go so input voltage it didn't seem that oh no it was <laughs> yeah it was going down to like 60 Ah, oh, 75%. I could have chosen a much more efficient buck converter, really. Uh, but this was just what it was, so what can you do? Uh, just starting out and things. And yeah, so I used the application circuit for this. And like I said before, usually when these data sheets, they do include a layout example. Oh, they also... I'm not sure if this was actually adjustable. I'm looking at the board right now so that's the 5 volt version so it's a fixed output of 5 volts because it was going out to a USB device uh, just the standard USB connector let's see let's see I saw it before here we go so we had the layout guidelines here I completely ignored this I believe just absolutely just like ah, eh, don't need to know that I just looked at the application and just like yeah this will do so it seems like a bit more I believe this might be their evaluation board no this might be actually their board itself it's got a bit more components on than what I did probably much more better also I should have followed this honestly uh, this was their value I could have just bought the evaluation board and that would have done the trick but they wanted something smaller you know I could fit in a lot more on this board but we'll see we will see we live and learn live and learn and let's get to it. the easy EDA at the time it's a brilliant tool when you're starting out it's really helps me it's nice and easy and it's it has incorporated with I think it's else LSCS electronics so you can actually order your parts get it you know and get the components whatever you should still build your own components and at the time of this i i saw these and i was just like why would anyone build their own components if, if everything was here you know surely like they wouldn't upload a wrong component and boy was i wrong like like luckily these components did fit but you know doing some more projects now and yeah it was not a good idea i mean it was bad you know like well, the thing the fabrication thing was the pin one indicator but that could have been placed outside but as you can see you can look at this board and think oh god now that's bad you see this is peering out this is off center this was the ground this is the ground pour and i've just got i think it was the ground line actually i didn't really need to do this i could just have the ground pour going around but yeah so be it so be it so you can see a whole lot of issues with this board. I didn't put a via here, even though it was crap. I just thought, I don't even know what I was thinking at the time. But I knew the concept of via since I placed one here, but I didn't think to place one here. And as you can see, I went for different iterations of 
No, it's slow about this one. I believe it's just like small changes, so yeah, this one. The thing I actually understood the vias and connect the ground with. I was just going through different shapes and sizes, really, just having a mess around with it. I've done some other things. Not much really, but I see a lot of the 50 volt to 5 volt that I was messing around with. But yeah, look, let's see. Let's see. Going from here, let's take a look at the trace width. One, the width is one millimeter. So I think I knew about trace width at the time. And if you don't know, it's just your your track could actually burn out if you do not have the enough width, uh, the trace width for the current you are trying to carry through. So in this case, let's say this board was actually delivering three amps. I think one millimeter was going to be enough, but imagine if it was like 0.2, the thing would just burn out because it wouldn't be able to carry it, essentially. So that's one thing you need to, to take care of when you're designing a board, especially for higher higher load currents. Look at that. This could have been placed probably a lot more closer here. I could have done it again, following the layout. This could have just been straightened out, just, just like that. There is no need for that to just have that little kink going up there. This could have been just straightened out, like just go straight down. You look, oh, this could have been rotated. You see, you look at all this and you're like, oh, what a mess it was. What a mess. I even put my, my last name is Winter on there. Oh, what a mess. So, yeah, it's took that on. And um, somehow it did work in the end. I'm not sure how by the grace of God I guess it did work and the soldering wasn't too good either uh, if you can see the soldier joints on the inductor there absolutely atrocious this was me just messing around with like just standard solder and then I discovered solder paste and flux and that made things a lot more easier I guess Um. yeah a lot this uh, this whole board could have been shrank down a bit and if I actually followed the layout guidelines it would have been a lot more neater. I could have added a lot more things to make it more stable and whatnot. Like the like the layout guideline here. You even had heat sink thermal considerations. Yeah. This was just a mess of a board, but you learn I would have done for all this also. This this would have been probably much nicer. I could have even added I could have added a filter actually on the board because this would have been a really annoyed the output I'd imagine. Or does it switch? It was a noisy on the input. But anywho, I would have added a filter on both ends anyway to to see that because it was bad. It was bad. At least at least it shows the capacitors right. <laughs> like give me some credit for that. Sixty three volt capacitor. Capacitor. Maybe it could have gone a bit bit bigger. But yeah, I could have imagined the pain the PC manufacturers were looking when they made this. I'm just like, oh, what's this guy doing? But yeah, it's it's one of the first ones I made. I just want to share with you guys and the mistakes that I've, that I've made in that. Vias, you need a via to go through these tracks. You can't just put something in like, like that. It doesn't work like that. And even then try and straighten, straighten out or just move it around and things. The ground plane was all right. They looked fine. This could have been moved. Or you didn't. I don't think you even need this because there's a ground pour anyway. We've done just fine. And the silk screen. They could have put a bit more on the silk screen layer for what it was. What it did, because you pick up these boards and no one knows what it actually does. So that would have been a really helpful indicator. For, for when I left just to label it the revision number and things like that since as I said self screen is just available to you let's take a look at this other board the amplifier I think is it based on LM3886 oh dear so I don't know if I even finished this one what was going on here seems to be a full of the cutout layer here Yeah, what is going on? Is this a port? Is it? What is it? I don't even know anymore, but this was a this was an audio amplifier, I believe. And it was 
it was just based on the recommended circuit i believe so the audio amplifier how it works it takes in your your audio jack output and it, you know you have your left and right audio the, the two resistors here they turn into a mono i believe that's what you want to call it turned into a mono turned into the amplifier here outputs a much higher output i could have put a ground power on here that would be nicer these tracks are way too thin don't like that i don't like that at all and i've kind of connected it all to ground again and now it's got errors didn't need to do that could put vibes or something. <laughs> I think this was probably an LED indicator to show that this thing's working. And was this the main power source? This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Like, oh, well, this does. Oh, maybe this does help. So we've got the bypass for noise. We've got standard de decoupling, blocking, uh, DC capacitor. Because capacitors they block AC, sorry, <laughs> they allow AC, they block DC, and that's not really what you want when you're in an audio device, really. So this must have been this must have been the power switch really going through here. Standard decoupling, like hundred microfarad. That's a big boy. That's got to be an application circuit somewhere. Some circuit I took offline. The black headphone jack. Yeah, looking at this, this is a real mess. <laughs> Also, it wasn't that bad. I think it worked. It worked when I did on the barrel board or something. But, yeah, let's take a look at this. I don't even remember this switch here. Maybe it's for this one. Oh, yeah, this looks like it. Yeah, yeah, this one. So this is actually... So this is actually a board on my... So this channel used to be called House of Tronics and everything, so I did this. And... Actually, this looks much better better so it seems i only did the copper port for this area it really it doesn't really make a difference you should just flood everything anyway it's going on the board just flood it who cares i think i've just thought like oh this is the one signal that's going through and like oh i don't it's the one signal that's going through and like i need to put flood around it because when you start out you see these boards with like all the with all the copper floods and i, I was thinking like i want to make my board just like that so I was playing around with it and seeing what it does. And that's the best way to learn. Just keep practicing, keep playing over to the board, see what works, see what doesn't. And keep going from there. So I did that, that went to the speaker. Actually, got something. What is this here? <laughs> what is this going on here? And this was the, I presume it's the, this is the top layer track, right? This top layer track, there's a ground track, which didn't need it at all because the ground pour had just flooded all over it. It was the same net. And you can see even the tracks here, ground pour again, don't don't need it. Don't need that, you don't need any of this. Let's see, and uh, yeah, this, this one did work. So I was relatively impressed with it. And you can see the layout is much more neat. It's even got mounting holes and what does it do? Oh, it looks beautiful. does an absolutely gorgeous, very, very, Okay, so silk screen. This is pin one. Need to put it. Do I have a no? I don't even have it. So you should have a pin one indicator on your components, and capacitor is also pin like a positive indicator which way it is. Diodes also if you are placing them. So maybe in that did I have one? So the silk screen did have it, but I would generally just place like a dot or a line there also for clear indication. So this one was much better probably make the tracks a bit thicker as I have I did have the space at the time I was just using stand tracks throughout it would make it much thicker but yeah relatively happy to see how far we get along just take things day by day and that's all I wanted just wanted to take a trip down memory lane and see what it was